Hello everyone and welcome to Skirt Garage and welcome to this, a 190E Cosworth. On today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you guys exactly how to dial in the wheels, tires, and suspension on this car. Because chronologically, I've actually had quite the headache when dealing with this car. See, there are a lot of nuances that come specific to this, the 190E Cosworth. And with that, I had to do a lot of minor tweaks on this car. So. I figured it was only worthwhile to tell you guys some of the pitfalls that I ran into and how to avoid them. Also, I have a DIY at the end of this video that will show you guys exactly how to replace the rear and front springs on this or any other W201 190 car. So with that, let's get this video started. Okay guys, we're gonna start chronologically with what happened on this car and why I had to mess with the suspension in the first place. And that really brings us to these wheels, specifically the tires, but let's start with the wheels. These wheels are actually the wheels that came on the 190 Evo 1 car. They are beautiful, they're 16 inch uh, wheels and the previous owner had these actually resprayed to kind of this gunmetal color. It looks great and I liked the wheels, but the problem with these was actually the diameter of the tire. This had a rolling diameter of like 25 inches and the stock car was around 24 inches. And if you know anything about these cars, you really can't get away with very much in the wheel arch here because these little fender flares, they actually jet back into the wheel lining pretty good, probably like a good inch and a half. And so you can't really get away with a whole lot of, I guess, really wide tires or really tall tires. And these being one inch larger than the OEM tire created a lot of problems, specifically rubbing. When I got this car, I couldn't go over any bumps at all without these, these tires right here scraping horribly. It was so bad that I didn't even want to drive the car. And so uh, essentially what I had to do is immediately fix that issue. And so I went about searching how I could fix this issue. But in my research, I found something very interesting. And this is what I hope to impart to you guys. This car, the 190 Cosworth, has a very unique suspension. It's got a self-leveling rear suspension from factory. And basically what that means the struts in the back can actually compress with this fluid, this hydraulic fluid, and it can increase or decrease the rear to have you on this level, I guess, ground for the car. And what it also does is take a little bit of the pressure off of the springs. And that is what I wanna to talk to you guys about right now. Because when I bought this car, the previous owner had deleted the SLS or the self-leveling rear suspension system on this car. He didn't actually delete it, all the hardware is still there, he just plugged it off. Um, and what he did instead was put Bilstein B8 shocks and he also put H&R rear springs. And through a lot of investigation and a lot of help through the great forum members and also the wizards on the Facebook groups, I learned that the springs, specifically the rear springs in the 190 Cosworth are different because of the self-leveling rear suspension. So basically, the springs are softer because the self-leveling suspension compensates for that in these cars. However, the previous owner did not know that. So when he changed this to a more standard Bilstein shock and H&R spring, he bought the springs that were made for the 190 Cosworth with the SLS system. And so what that did was it basically paired a, a shock and a spring that was too soft. And so that's why, even though this did have a pretty high rolling diameter, it still rubbed all the time. And so what I did to fix this initially was I went ahead and found the springs, the H&R lowering springs, for a 2.3 non 16 valve car. And I installed them on the car and I was so nervous guys because when I did this, the 
H&R catalog uh, salesman said, hey, you'll know that they're different springs because one is like a dark cherry color and the other one is a bright, vibrant red. And I was like, okay, perfect. So I ordered them. I took my old springs off, the softer ones. I, I set them right next to each other and I kid you not, the colors were almost identical. I could barely tell a difference at all. And so I was super nervous that I ordered the wrong springs or this wasn't going to work, but I trudged forward, I went ahead and I installed the 2.3 normal springs, not the Cosworth ones, and I put them on the car, I dropped it, it looked identical, so again, I was super worried, but I took the car out on a test drive, and lo and behold, I could go over any bump and the rear would not scrape. So, main takeaway here, guys. If you delete your SLS system, the standard springs that come in the 190 Cosworth are not strong enough if you have anything over the uh, rolling diameter of the stock tire. So that is the first hard lesson learned. Now let's go ahead and move up to the front. Okay guys, now we're up into the front and the front had a couple different issues. Uh, first off, under extreme compression, the front also did bottom out, but it wasn't near as bad as it was in the back. And so I didn't feel the need to address that immediately. I waited until I got this wheel and tire package, and then I went ahead and I settled in with the, I guess, correct ride height that I wanted. So let's, I guess let's talk about this wheel and tire package and how it compares to these Evo 1 wheels or the SL Goalie wheels, if you like. First off, these are 16 inch by eight and the ET of 34 inches. And they looked good, but it wasn't lighting anything on fire for me. I do kind of like when cars have that kind of big shoulder, big butch looking tire. But I think these, oh my gosh, these look amazing. I adore the way that this looks. First off, because these wheels are replica wheels. Um, they're replica wheels of the exact uh, wheels that were raced in the DTM series. And for that reason, I just love these. I can't say that enough, but I really, really do. Obviously guys, these just spin off. They're not center lock wheels, but uh, as far as like just period correct, looking great, I can't say enough good things about them. This company is called DTM Raider Works, the people who do these wheels, and they're cast wheels, so they're not the lightest. Um, when I compared them to these wheels that I took off, they were about three pounds heavier per corner, which of unsprung weight, that is a lot, but I will say that these tires, um, I, w I went ahead and got like the stickiest tires I've ever bought for a car. They're the Falcon RT660 tires, and my gosh, my fingernail could put a laceration in the sidewall of these tires. They're super, super sticky, and the shoulder construction is very, very thick, so these tires themselves weigh a good bit. I don't know how much more, but in this configuration, a 215-40R17, uh, and I think this is a 225-50, yeah, 16, that this package is about three pounds heavier. And I'm not trying to race this thing. I'm not taking it to any half mile drags. So for that, I don't really care that I'm losing a little bit of, of speed because this is more about cruising, about having fun, and three pounds, whatever, that's fine with me. Okay, these uh, specifically, these are 17 inches, they have an offset of 35 millimeters, and they are eight and a half inches wide. They look unbelievable. I will grab the camera and walk around the car, kind of show you guys a little bit of what it looks like. I'm also running a three millimeter spacer in the rear, so one other thing I want to show you guys with regards to these wheels is you got to be really careful with the shank length of these bolts. The standard ones that come on these cars, they are super, super, super long. This is like 40 something, I, I could go measure it, but I think it's like 40 something millimeters long. And when you stick it through and you push it throughout this other side and you measure this, I guess, length back here, I think it only sticks out like 15 or so millimeters, maybe less, maybe like 13. And when I did that with these wheels, it stuck out like 23 millimeters. So like a good 10 to 13 millimeters longer on this wheel. 
And part of that is because of the design. This doesn't have threads on the first like 15 millimeters of the lug, whereas the ones that I needed for these wheels do. So long story short, when I got these wheels, I was so excited to try them on. I didn't have any other lugs, so I used these. And I didn't go crazy because I knew they were a little bit longer, but I didn't think that they were like 15 millimeters longer. And so I put them on the front wheel and I spun it and the wheel spun freely, wasn't making any weird noises, everything was good. So I was like, great. So I went to the rear wheel. I thought that it would be the exact same thing. So I put them in and I tried to spin it, nothing. And it was like it was completely stuck. And I am so embarrassed to admit this, guys, but I tightened these wheels directly onto the emergency parking brake of my car. And like an absolute idiot, I had to actually go back in and replace one of the little springs that holds the parking brake assembly. That was like such a waste of a day. It was super tedious to, and you know, it didn't cost anything. It was like $2 for a spring. But long story short, guys, when you are buying new wheels for this car, do not assume that your lug nuts are gonna be similar. I mean, you should never assume that, but in your excitement to put your new wheels on, always stick the bolt through the wheel and measure how much space you have on the wheels that you're taking off the car before you put your new wheels on. Okay, so that was a hard lesson I had to learn. I think these are only like 23 millimeter length bolts and these were like 40, so a huge difference, but that was the only way I could get the fronts and the rears to not hit anything. I had to go through a couple different sets of, of lug nuts. So anyways, that was another hard lesson learned. Um, one other thing I do wanna talk about is the stickers that I put on these cars. So. On these 190 Cosworth, you'll see a lot of people who put like OZ racing and stuff like that on the wheels. And I wanted to do that as well, but these are not OZ racing wheels. And my favorite DTM race car of that era was the Sonax race car. And I, that's still the, the soap I use when I wash my cars today. Anyways, the Sonax AMG car had OZ Racing on one half and then AMG on the other half. And so I was thinking about doing that. And right before, you know, decision came, I ended up thinking, I've never seen anybody put Cosworth on these wheels, which is like the engine, you know, they're the ones who did the head of this engine. Like that's a big deal. And that was and is a famous racing development engineering company. Why doesn't somebody do that? And so I said, you know what, I will. So I put Cosworth and then I, I got this really cool looking decreasing stripe. I worked with a company called Precision Films. It's a good friend of mine. And me and him went back and forth on this, I guess, design for about a week or so until it looked perfect. And then he uh, helped me make these out. He cut them out, pasted them for me and did it all in shop. And I just love the way this looks. So I can't thank them enough. Precision Films, you guys rock, thank you. And uh, let's, let's quickly get on to the front suspension here and then we'll wrap this video up with that DIY of the springs. So now that we're on the front, again, uh, the only thing that I really had to do here was when I put these wheels on, obviously the rolling diameter was an inch smaller, so I had a huge gap. And thankfully, Mercedes does something really nice. Uh, the Mercedes cars, the 190s, their shock is separated from the spring. They're not together. It's not a McPherson type strut. So with that, you have a little bit of variability that Mercedes gives you. Mercedes will sell you these. And these are spring uh, perch stops or spring perch shims. And they come in four different sizes. Mercedes calls them burls, B-U-R-L-S. And they come in eight millimeters, 13, 18, and 23 millimeters. So basically they're five millimeter increments and it gives you a little bit of, um, I guess, variety with your suspension ride height. And so uh, when I noticed that there was a huge gap here, what I did was I took the OEM springs off and I just went ahead and measured what the top one was and it was like 18. And so I bought the smallest one, eight millimeter one, I threw it on there and when I put it back down, it dropped 10 millimeters and it's enough. I think right now the way it sits is great. 
And I also do want to say something. I got quite a bit of front camber placed on the front wheels just to make it, you know, drive a little bit more fun in the corners. And I swear that the camber I added also decreases the ride height. I don't know if that's true. I could be completely losing my mind. But as it sits right now, I absolutely love it. So that is really all I have to say about the suspension. You guys know the pitfalls of the lug nuts being extremely long from the factory. Also, if you do delete your self-leveling rear suspension, you're gonna have to get a coilover setup that's designed for it, or you're gonna have to get um, stiffer rear springs that are made for the non-16 valve cars. Beyond that, guys, I think that that is everything. We're gonna go ahead and move this video on to the DIY portion. And with that, let's get started. All right, the first thing they're gonna do is go ahead and remove the lug nuts and take the wheel off. With the wheel off, you can now look at the spring right there next to the shock. Now you're gonna take this spring removal tool and you're gonna kinda thread or move it up the spring as high as possible without getting stuck inside of the shoe. Then you're gonna grab the other one and move it as low as possible so to get the basically the biggest separation before you go ahead and clamp those down with the clamping device. Now what that actually looks like is this kind of uh, triangular thing. It goes into the top and then you spin it, it attaches, and then you can use a, a hand wrench or a power tool to cinch it down. Uh, the company actually recommends a hand wrench, but I went ahead and used my impact gun just very slightly, um, going you know slowly, little by little, and then once it's fully ready to come out, you can just kind of wiggle it, rock it back and forth, and you're good to go. Okay. This is the one I pulled off of the car. If we measure it, it is 18.5 or essentially 18. This is the, should be the 13 millimeter one. Yep, 13 millimeters. And this is the eight. Yeah. So, um, Going from this to this is about a 10 millimeter drop, and which is about, you know, this much. Um, and I think to make this whole thing worth it, I'm just gonna try the eight. And if I run into issues, then I'll back pedal and I'll go to the 13 after. Okay guys, I put the new shim on, it took like two seconds. Now when you come back here, just make sure that you line up down here in this figure shape. Line up where the edge of this coil spring is to have a good seat and then just ever so slowly uh, you want to back it up. Bang up, bang up tear, put it in reverse tear, put it in reverse, oh lord. Back it up into where it's supposed to go. Here is a final just look at everything. Um, I did have one issue as I was getting this done. The upper, uh, the upper little thing right here was getting stuck into this shoe and I had to use the other size. I had to take the larger one, place it here, cinch it up and then I was able to get the uh, top one out. So just something to note if that ever happens to you. All right guys, the rear is super easy. The first thing you have to do is use a jack to brace the arm and then remove that far inside bolt. It's pretty long. With that one out, you can then move your tension to the bolt that holds that arm to the shock. When that bolt is out, then it's really just you know downhill from here. All you have to do is remove that bolt, then very slowly release the jack and the lowering spring, or just the spring if you don't have lowering springs, will come off. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little bit to make it come off, but it's super simple. From here, just transfer the spring pads or shims, whatever you want to call it, to the new springs that you'll be using, and then you're good to reinstall. One helpful tip is that when you're replacing this arm, go ahead and use the jack with very little pressure 
to set everything up and dial it in so that you can put the bolt back into place without having to hold the arm itself. I found that once I did the shock, I had to move the jack over a little bit to get it exactly lined up for the inside large bolt also. Then once you get done with that, all you really have to do is put the tray back over the arm and you are good to go. Well, anyways, guys, there you have it. I know that these videos aren't for everyone, but if you have found this informative or helpful at all, please give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, uh, consider subscribing, that helps the channel grow. And with that, we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.